So when I was attending the OPD a couple of days ago, there was a 35 year old mother of two who approached me and asked me, I have just been diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia. What can I expect from my life ahead? This set me into thinking, why should I not make a video on what a typical journey of a trigeminal neuralgia patient is like. So here goes. The first time the patient has facial pain, they are unable to understand why they have the facial pain. They are even unable to think that this is facial pain. Initially they think it is either tooth pain or a gum related pain or ear pain or something like that. And it comes for just such a fraction of a second that they do not know what it is and it goes away. So they just ignore it. When this happens a second time and a third time, then they start becoming a little more aware. This is something that is recurring. Then they start paying attention to the pain, what kind of pain it is. When it happens a couple more times and it becomes more severe in intensity, they think should I take a painkiller? What kind of painkiller should I take? Should I apply some ice fermentation or should I try some hot packs or something? Will that relieve the pain? So in the initial first few days or maybe a couple of weeks when the pain begins, all goes into actually the patient trying to come ter to terms with the facial pain and for them to themselves understand what kind of pain they are having. Once they realize that this pain is here to stay, though it comes intermittently, it is here to stay, then they realize that they have to visit a doctor. Typically, if the pain is in the lower jaw or in the upper jaw, they visit a dentist or if the pain goes towards the ear, they might visit an ENT specialist. So the dentist or the ENT specialist do their job, they find out, they evaluate and then over a period of time, they realize that the pain is not to do anything with the ear or with the tooth. Occasionally, because brushing is also a trigger for trigeminal neuralgia, we find tooth decay quite commonly in these patients and tooth extraction is also quite common if there is a pain in the V3 or in the V2 division. Before the patient comes to the neurosurgeon or to the neurologist, they have a couple of teeth knocked off. The ENT surgeon may also say that there is nothing wrong with the ear. Eventually the pain keeps coming and going and then they realize that they need to see some other specialist doctor or they are referred by the ENT specialist or the dentist or they have made the diagnosis themselves and referred to a neurologist. The neurologist then starts the patient on medication. All the medication typically that is useful for trigeminal neuralgia are medicines that are used for prevention of convulsions, that means FITS. So these anticonvulsant medication are brain numbing medications, which means that they numb the brain and all the nerves that are there so that they do not respond to any external triggers like touching, eating, brushing. And therefore, initially the pain of trigeminal neuralgia is under control with these small doses of anticonvulsant medications. Slowly over a period of time, these anticonvulsant medications stop having their effect and the pain becomes higher. As the pain becomes higher, the medication doses have to be increased. The doses are increased, then the pain comes under control. Over a period of time, the pain again takes the upper hand and the medication has to be stepped up. A point comes when the medication is in such a high dose that the side effects of the medications are much higher than the effects. So that means the patients are continuing to take the high doses of medications, but they are still not having as much relief as they were having initially because of the medicines. Sometimes the patients or their relatives or well-wishers, well-meaning well-wishers direct them to alternative medicines because they are frustrated with the lack of effect of regular medicines that they are being given by their neurologists. These Ayurvedic or homeopathic medication may have effect, may not have effect and over a period of time, the patients themselves realize that this is not working for them. 
Sometimes by coincidence there is a pain holiday which is natural in the course of the disease when they are taking alternative medicine. So, they may believe that the alternative medicine has worked and therefore, they are having no pain. Eventually the pain returns and it returns with a vengeance. The pain becomes too severe, the effects of the medication are not adequate, the side effects are very high, the patients remain drowsy, they are unable to remember many things, sometimes they have difficulty in walking straight. We had a patient who was on more than 1200 milligrams of carbamazepine, she could not walk to the bathroom, but she continued to take the medication because it at least kept it under some kind of control. Without the medication, it was difficult for her to live with the medication also it was difficult for her to live. At this point in time, the patient is really frustrated with the pain and they start having suicidal thoughts. Of course, there are many reasons in the family why they have to continue to live, many things going for them in their lives that these thoughts thankfully are not predominant, but they do seek some kind of relief. That is when they start doing their research and try and find different specialists who can offer them different choices of treatment. At our MVD center, we typically do not wait till the side effects of the medications are so high to offer them a choice of undergoing surgery. We believe that early surgery is important in preventing the long term effects of the chronic pain that the patient suffers from. The other choices of treatment after medication are radiofrequency lesioning of the nerve, alcohol blocks into the nerve and gamma knife radiation. All these are nerve destructive procedures, temporary and with lower success rate than MVDs. Because one of the causes for trigeminal neuralgia is a compression of the trigeminal nerve by one or more blood vessels, it is very intuitive that microvascular decompression surgery is a treatment of choice. Of course, it is a treatment of choice for patients who are deemed fit for brain surgery. MVD surgery is a brain surgery which is performed under general anesthesia and it is a decision that needs to be taken by the patient and their relatives after fully understanding the implications, the successes, the risks and the consequences of surgery. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel to know more about more such videos from other playlists as well as the trigeminal neuralgia playlist. Thank you and see you next time.